morning. Good morning, St. Paul's. Please rise and join me in singing our opening hymn. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Greetings in the name and grace and peace of Jesus, our coming one. Thank you so much for being here at St. Paul's. We're so glad that we get to worship together. Uh, my name is Kyle Reynolds. I'm the senior pastor here, and it's a joy for us to continue this Advent journey together as we move our focus today to love. As we get started in what will be, I think, a very fun service, I have a few announcements for you. First of all, uh, on the end of your row, you should see a, a notebook to sign in on. So if, uh, if you would take a moment to register your attendance, we would be very grateful. Um, in that notebook, you'll also find, excuse me, in that notebook, you'll also find a prayer card. If there is a, a joy or a concern that we can share with you in prayer this week, uh, I would love to do that. And so you can fill that out and drop that in the offering plate when that comes by a, a little bit later in the service. I uh, also wanted to make sure that you knew that today is your last day. We're we're trying to get uh, the, the picture of all of our, our folks here at St. Paul's throughout the Advent season. And so today is uh, your last day to do that. And I, I want you to do that for a few reasons. First of all, um, we will take that picture and put it in a frame and add it to our Christmas trees that are right outside the door. You'll see that there's lots of folks who have already done that. Um, and it's really cool to see sort of that family Christmas tree evolve, or Christmas trees actually evolve throughout the year. Uh, the second reason is that uh, you'll get to take that ornament then at the end of the season, hopefully as a little memento or a way to remember this, this particular time at St. Paul's. And then the last thing is that we'll ask you to fill out some information when you do that um, to update our records. We want to stay in good communication with you, uh, and the best way to do that is to make sure that our information is correct. And so uh, we'll have folks there giving you a clipboard, and you can fill out some information. So if you have not done that yet, please do so today. Uh, otherwise, I have to show up to your house unannounced this week, <clears throat> and I'll just take a picture in whatever bathrobe you're wearing or whatever state you are. So uh, do that before you leave. Um, on December 19th at noon, there is a webinar about Medicaid expansion and what faith communities can do to lift their voices. Uh, this is an issue that's been at the heart of this community for a long time, and so uh, you can join that from your lunch hour at work or wherever you're at, and I hope you'll consider doing that for us this Tuesday and then um, Shawnee Community Services this afternoon is, is hosting a party, and they're a long partner of ours. And so uh, if you want to come help host that for families in our area, that's from 1 to 3 today. Uh, you can see Pastor Eric or myself if you need any information on that as well. I uh, wanted to remind you throughout this holiday season, we are collecting a love offering for our staff. Uh, this goes to a gift at the end of the year to show appreciation for uh, the lay staff and the pastors and all the people who work behind the scenes to help make 
uh, uh, this place keep running week in and week out. And so there are envelopes that say love offering on them. You can put cash in there. You can write love offering on a check. Or if you're giving online, that's an available option in the drop down menu. Um, as we, I don't know if you knew this, but Christmas is like tomorrow, basically. Um, <laughs> So as we move into this final week, I wanted to share some, uh, just some reminders about the services that we have. So Tuesday night, uh, we have what's called a Blue Christmas service, uh, which is at 6 p.m., is that correct? Um, at 6 p.m. Uh, this is a, uh, I, I like to call it a somber Christmas service of healing and hope. Uh, if you're maybe not feeling all decked the halls and folly jolly, la 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 la, um, this might be an opportunity to experience the good news of Christmas in a different way. It's a little bit quieter and more subdued service. And basically, uh, the premise is that there is good news for all of us, even if we're wrestling with grief or loss or, or, or not feeling how uh, we, we tend to project that we should feel um, in our culture at large. And so uh, if you want to come be a part of that, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, I will be here. Pastor Eric is leading that. And it's a, a good opportunity to spend some time in reflection and to really wrestle with the gift of this season that we celebrate then next Sunday on Christmas Eve, we will have a morning service that will be Christmas-focused, but look a little bit more like a normal Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. And then we have Christmas Eve services uh, with candlelight at 4, 7, and 11 p.m. Um, the 4 o'clock will be a, a little bit more contemporary, the 7 o'clock a little more traditional, and the 11 o'clock sort of a traditional 11 o'clock service. So uh, I hope that you'll plan to join us. I also hope that you'll plan to invite somebody to come with you. Um, we gave you invite cards if you were here last week. There's more on the table out there. Uh, friends, uh, part of why folks come uh, to church at Christmas and Easter is because there is a familiar story that they know. People are much more receptive to say yes, and in fact, uh, often research suggests are waiting for an invitation, hoping somebody will invite them, because they know the story. It's familiar. They heard it growing up. You hear it in the culture around us. We sing songs that are familiar. And so I want to just encourage you, if there is somebody in your life uh, that might benefit from an invitation to St. Paul's to invite them to come and be a part of worship with us next week as we celebrate the good news of Christmas. Today, friends, our focus is on love and on the gift uh, that we receive in this season from God. Uh, I want to invite the Yarborough family to come forward uh, to light our Advent candle or Advent wreath um, as we begin worship. Good morning, friends. As we draw near to Christmas today, we complete the outer circle of our Advent wreath as we light the love candle. In Jeremiah 23, God gives this promise about the one who is to come. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall fear no longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal, wise, and deal wisely, and shall execute injustice and righteousness in the land. Today, as we are reminded of our journey and the invitation to make room for Christmas, we will begin by talking about peace, which God offers to us now. Okay, we got peace. <laughs> then we lit the candle of hope, which gives us vision and strength to move forward in faith. Last week, we celebrated joy and imagined what it would look like to make space for simple joy and connection. And today, we light the candle of love. The scripture tells us, love casts out fear, lifts up the lowly, seeks out the lost, and celebrates justice. 
Today we celebrate God's love for us as we seek to share love with others. Let us pray. Dear God, as we prepare to celebrate your arrival, we know that it is because of love that you come to us. Let us make room to experience this gift in a new way this year, and help us to make love the guiding light of our lives, that we may generously share what we have freely received. Amen. Friends, as we continue in worship, today is a special day for a lot of reasons. Uh, we get to hear a lot of fantastic music. And to begin that, uh, I want to invite our children's choir forward to share a piece with us. Uh, if this doesn't get you in the Christmas mood, I don't know what to do for you.
Friends, will you join me in this affirmation of faith? We believe that God has come to us, that God brought us into being, gave us breath and purpose, and blessed us to be a blessing to others. We believe that God is coming to us, that God is not content to leave us alone, will come as one of us, flesh and bone. We believe that God will come to us again, that God will have the final word, and that word will be good, when tears and pain will be no more, and all will gather at the table to sing Alleluia. We are an Advent people, celebrating the God that has come to us, the God who is coming to us, and the God who will come to us again. In this season, we are making room for the good news of Emmanuel. For God is with us. Amen. seated. Friends, as we prepare to receive our offering today, uh, just a few comments that I'd like to share with you. Throughout this month of December, we've been talking about many great opportunities to give, uh, and all of that work is made possible, the opportunity to, to give away the Christmas Eve offering and to support our staff, um, in large part because of the work that volunteers and staff do uh, week in and week out. Uh, the incredible work to keep this place doing the mission and ministry that it's called to do to, to foster community partnerships and um, to, to prepare worship services and lead us in incredible music, to, to lead uh, our children and our youth and to witness to uh, an inclusive faith, uh, not only in our church, but in the state uh, and in our denomination. And so all of that is made possible by the generosity of folks like you who uh, invest in what God is doing in St. Paul's. And so for us and for most churches, December is a, a really important time financially. There's a, a, a lot of folks who are, who are members, who are guests, uh, even visitors that, uh, that, that give, that help us sort of end the year off well. And so uh, we as a church community have a little ground that we would like to make up in the second half of the month. And so uh, with hopes that that will help us end this year uh, solidly and begin next year as well. And so for many folks who are worshiping today in person and online, uh, this will be the last sort of invitation that you have to, uh, to give to the regular operations of the church this year. Um, now, we'll take it almost any time, but this will be the last explicit invitation for that, uh, as we'll be giving away Christmas Eve offering, and, and I know that the 31st is a little bit crazy. And so uh, I just wanted you to, to encourage you in the midst of this season of generosity in which uh, we're invited to consider the gift that we receive from God and invited to be generous in so many ways uh, to, to think about your giving for this congregation and, uh, and all the work that we're able to do together so that we can keep uh, moving forward. So that's my invitation for you as our ushers prepare to take our offering that uh, each one of us would be reminded of the gifts that we have, that, that we would join together to, to, to wrap up this year uh, that has been a lot in this congregation and to move ahead uh, in faith, uh, trusting uh, that of the blessings that we've been given, we're invited to give back and that God takes that and uses that for the building of the kingdom around us. So uh, I'm going to invite our ushers to take our offering. I am going to invite our children, if they would like to join us for Kids Connection, uh, to join at the back and go downstairs. That's available for kids through sixth grade. Uh, and I would invite each one of us to consider how it is that we might respond to God's grace this year.
Loving God, we give you thanks for these, your gifts. We're only giving to you out of what you've already given to us. And so, God, multiply these gifts for the uses of your kingdom and of our church. Build up your body. Extend the table. Uh, God, we, we love you, and we want to make room in our lives. So we give, and, and we make room, and, and then we get to receive. Um, and so we receive grace upon grace, and so we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. truth sent from above, the truth of God, the God of love. Therefore, don't turn me from your door, but hearken all both rich and poor. The first
Christmas night all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring.
Thank you, choir. It was wonderful. And thank you, Jackson, for leading that. Our friends, this morning as we have completed our Advent wreath, our focus is indeed on love. And so uh, we turn our attention there. And uh, our scripture reading today is going to come from the first chapter of John, beginning in verse 10. <clears throat> he was in the world, he being the word. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came into what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood and the will of flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. May God add blessing to our reading and understanding of these words today. So as we come this day to talk about love, I wonder where it is that immediately your mind goes. Uh, where is your attention drawn when you hear that the subject is on love? My hunch is that for many of us, uh, when we think about this, our, our minds immediately go to a romantic kind of love, which is fine and good and holy and beautiful and if that's where we stop, if that is our whole conception of love, then we're falling a little bit short of what it is that we're talking about here today. Because love is about the compassion with which we care for our neighbors. It's about that which binds together friendships and relationships. It's about uh, how we care for people that we don't know and the vulnerable and for children. It's about a willingness to sacrifice oneself for the sake of another or for the whole or for whatever is good. Furthermore, the scriptures say that because God has loved us, we are to love others, or said differently, because God is love, the very nature and essence of discipleship, of what it means to follow Jesus, is about love. And so as long as we've got all of that down pat, we can move forward. But I want to focus today on, on one particular uh, component, one particular thing that we need to do with love. Uh, no matter what form we're talking about, we could spend all day talking about various biblical conceptions of, of love, and, and that would be a, a worthwhile endeavor. But, but I want to talk today about how it is that we receive love, how open we are to receiving love, uh, what forms and fashions we receive love in. And so I wonder how you're doing in that subject my hunch is that when I say that, we begin to feel a little bit uneasy because honestly, we would usually prefer to talk about the ways that we love other people because we have control over that. We can say that and we may do it better or worse at various times, but at least I can, I can point to my actions and say, this is an act of love. This is how I care for the people who are around me, those that I know and those that I don't. This is how I show my adoration and affection for God. But when we talk about receiving it, all of a sudden, things feel a little bit fuzzier because it's a bit hard to quantify what that looks like and it's a bit hard for us to count that. And when we talk about our openness to receiving love and the various forms that it presents itself from other people and from the divine, well, it feels like it's all a little bit less clear because we can say, yes, I'm, I'm open to love, but, but that looks like different things in different seasons and for different people. So I want to imagine for a little bit uh, how it is that we can be more open to love as we're in this season, how it is that we can make room for love. But let's, let's bring it down a level first. If the idea, the concept, the, the wrestling with, with receiving love uh, feels difficult, let's ask a different question. How, how good are you at receiving a gift or a compliment or a kind word or the compassion of somebody else? I'm going to tell you that, that I've observed this a lot in myself and other people, and most of us aren't very good at it. So let me give you an example. I, I, have a, uh, I know a student who's in, in middle school, and she recently uh, was in a play. Now, she wasn't the lead. It was her first play, uh, but she was up on stage, and, and they did all of the various shows. And um, <clears throat> what happened after the show is that people would come up to her and say how wonderful she had done and how great it was and how much they loved her, and she hated it. It was so uncomfortable to have all these people saying these, these nice and good things about her, and she didn't know what to do. And so she would sort of fidget and get uncomfortable, and finally she started hiding after the show because she didn't want people to talk to her. And so I was talking to her and to her parents, and, uh, and they said, that's what we're working on this week with the show. 
And I told her, I said, I I'll tell you this, you're in good company. One of the, the, the most important things that I learned in seminary uh, didn't happen in a classroom, but it happened in the receiving line at the end of service. Uh, because when I preach a really short sermon, people say how good it was. And, um, <laughs> and when people say how good it is or they say nice things about it, I tend to want to deflect and diminish or, or sort of dodge it. And, and I want to say something back because the idea of just receiving a compliment, an, an act of grace, a, a bit of love, a gift is a challenge for us. And so I would say various things until a mentor of mine said, hey, uh, that's, that's not all that helpful. You need to learn how to receive those things. And instead, I just never preach a short sermon. Um, <laughs> but I told her, I said, Lily, I, I get this. I understand that. It's a, it is a challenging thing to do. Now, contrast that to this seven-year-old whose birthday party I went to. And every present he opened, you would have thought it was like a million dollars and a puppy. Um, he was yelling and shouting, Mom, I got a transformer. And then he would act something out. And I leaned over to Hope and I said, I just want to give this kid a present every day. I don't even care what it is. I just want to watch his response because he was good at receiving it. Most of us aren't that good at receiving gifts. So let me give you another example. If somebody comes up to you and um, says they like some article of clothing that you're wearing, as a Midwesterner, you are required by actual divine nature to say what? It was on sale. That is right. That is how we are programmed because we could not just simply receive that compliment. We have to say, oh, I got it on sale. You'll never guess how cheap it was because we're not programmed to do that. It feels bad uh, to, to, to receive those things. And so uh, the other thing that we'll sometimes do is deflect it back. Somebody could be in a burlap sack and you would be like, I love yours too. <laughs> it's great. Some of you could uh, save a cat from a house fire and come out all covered in soot and somebody would be like, that's so heroic. And you would be like, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. I was just walking by. Because we don't want to draw attention to those things. We could go on and on. But friends, the point is this. We're not very good at receiving gifts. And I think the same thing is true for us about love, that sometimes uh, we don't do very well at receiving it from other people. Uh, what I've been doing through this series is trying to imagine some of the things that we need to uh, rearrange or push to the side or, or, or clear out in order to make room uh, for receiving these gifts of hope and peace and joy and love. And so I want to imagine together for just a couple of minutes, what are the things that, that prevent us from receiving love? And I'll tell you, as I began to think about this, immediately the first thing that came to mind is that I think there is often shame and guilt that we have that prevents us from receiving love. It prevents us from receiving that from other people that we know, uh, from, from uh, people that we don't know, from strangers. It also prevents us sometimes from, I think, fully grasping the, the reality of what God is offering to us. That because we have these experiences of which we're not proud or because uh, people have done things that have harmed us, we, we sort of build up these walls over time. And the shame and this guilt kind of weighs us down and we begin to, to sort of push back. We, we, we begin to get more like a, a brick, unable to sort of absorb that love that other people offer us versus a sponge. And we, we sort of close down a little bit. And so uh, whether it's because of our preoccupation with our past or, or our perception of the present, what happens is that very oftentimes uh, we close down to the possibility of receiving love. The other thing that I think, uh, the second thing that comes to mind for me is the idea of hurts. And I mean that in two directions. First of all, some uh, of us have loved in the past and we've been hurt. Uh, we've experienced what it means for somebody to go behind our back or do something to our face, to, to betray us, to harm us, to hurt us. And, and when you've experienced that pain, it, it sort of closes you off or at least makes you hesitant about engaging in love or receiving uh, love in the present. And so sometimes it's because of what's happened, because of our history, because of our experiences that we, we learn that perhaps it's better not to get our hopes up and to, to engage in this and just simply to close off a little bit. But if we're also honest, we, we, we have hurt others as well. Sometimes it's not just about the hurt that's done to us. Sometimes it's because uh, we, we have done things in the past that have hurt others. And sometimes it was an accident and we wish that we could have avoided it. But, but if we're honest, sometimes it, it was on purpose and we knew it would hurt them. Uh, sometimes we felt like we were in a place where there was a decision to make and there was no good choice. 
And yet a choice had to be made, and because of that, uh, people were hurt. And so, so we have this hurt that builds up, and, and what happens with all of these things, with shame and with guilt and with hurt that we receive and hurt that we give out, is that I think uh, as it builds over time, we begin to, to be in this posture where we think that we're unworthy. That because of what's happened in our past and because of our experiences and because of the things that we did that we wish we wouldn't have done and because of how we've been hurt, we just think that we must not be worthy of the gift, that we must not be deserving. I mean, isn't that a question that all of us have wrestled with in some form or fashion in our lives? If not regularly, at least in one season. And if not in relation to how we receive love from other people, certainly in relation to how we receive love from God. Because it feels a little bit overwhelming to think that the God who made all things and knows all things cares enough about us to come and to love us fully. I think sometimes we adopt this sense of unworthiness. One of my favorite books, well, and movies, is, is uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And in the, the story, there's a, a boy named Charlie who's sort of in his coming of age years. And he experiences, he witnesses some, uh, um, uh, his sister in a relationship that isn't very healthy. And in the movie, he, he goes to this teacher who is a mentor. And he says, uh, why do nice people choose to date the wrong people? And the teacher says, Charlie, we accept the love that we think we deserve. And I found that to be true in my life. I, I think that sometimes part of why we struggle to receive love from God or from other people or to grapple with the enormity of the sort of love that we talk about is because we just don't think that we're deserving of it. There are probably many other things that, that prevent us from receiving love I think sometimes we realize that if we did grapple with the enormity of what God offers to us, that it would change things. We would have to look at the world differently. If we did receive the love from, from strangers and friends and, and, and those that are in our closest circles, that, that it would change the way that we live. And sometimes I think we're not ready for that sort of change. Sometimes I wonder if we, we miss love because it comes in forms that aren't expected. That's a part of the heart of the story that we celebrate this time of year. That's what our scripture was talking about, that the one who made the world came into the world, and yet the world did not recognize him. We did not recognize him. Sometimes love comes in forms that we don't think or anticipate. Sometimes it comes from a person that, that we, we don't think cares about us at all. Sometimes it comes in a form of a gift or, or an offering that, that doesn't at first feel like love. And I think sometimes we get all tripped up because Love just presents itself in ways that, that we can't imagine and that we aren't expecting. If it happens to God incarnate come down, might it be happening all around us that love is being offered and presented both from God and from others and that we just aren't aware of it? Friends, the heart of this season is love's arrival among us. And the purpose of this four-week Advent journey that we've been on is to prepare our hearts to welcome in this gift of love once again and to receive it anew. The good news is, though, that even we who sometimes feel unworthy, even we who have experienced hurt both uh, in receiving and in giving, we who wrestle with shame and guilt, uh, even you and I who, who sometimes uh, are afraid to, to embrace the fullness of this gift that's offered, the good news is that God doesn't wait for us to get everything figured out. God comes before we get our lives put together, before we, before we learn how to receive. God comes to be with us. In other words, the light doesn't wait to bless us until everything is figured out and all is made right. And that's the subversive and the shocking part of this story that we celebrate each December that before we put ourselves together and before uh, we get all buttoned up and before we can make amends and atonement for everything that's been broken in our past and before we can figure out all the hurts that have been imparted upon us, that God shows up and comes to us. And not only that, comes in a way that might undermine our defenses. What could be more surprising than a child? And if we could not receive love from God and in ways that God had expressed it before, perhaps this was a way that we could receive it anew. So 
So friends, I don't know the ways and the forms that love is coming to you. I don't know what makes it difficult for you to receive it and what you need to address in order to be more open, how you can create space. The answers to those questions are as varied as each one of our experiences, and yet they share common patterns like the contour of the heart. Here's what I do know, is that love is being offered to us, at least from God, persistently and consistently, right here and now and in every season, that it's not waiting till we get ourselves figured out. That there's no past or present hang-ups or hurts and nothing in the future that can separate us from that offer of God's love. And there's no amount of minimization or deflection that will deter God from offering over and over and over again. So maybe we could be like that seven-year-old and just receive the gift and sing and shout. Or maybe you want to take some time to quietly ponder that gift in the week ahead as we move towards Christmas. I think you know for you what it is that needs to open up so that you can receive good news and receive love in all the forms that it's presenting yourself. But I also think it's worth being reminded that the God who made and formed you and who knows you inside and out has called you beloved and worthy. So friends, the good news today is that love is coming to us. Love has come and love will come again. We'll receive it anew in a week. We don't have to wait to receive that gift. We don't have to get it all together. God is coming. We simply need to make room. Amen. As we continue in worship, I want to invite you into a time of response. Uh, you can do that a couple of ways. Number one, you can stay where you are and, and be seated and spend time in reflection and perhaps consider how it is that you could be more open to the gift of God's love that's offered in this season. You can also do that by lighting a candle here at the front or the back, uh, maybe as a sign of a hope or a healing that you are, are, are seeking, uh, maybe as a sign of a loved one or a prayer that's on your heart this day. But friends, this time is yours. I pray that God's Spirit will meet you in the midst of it, that you may be more open to receive the gift of love today.
Jackson, please pray with me. Loving God, we thank you that you come in flesh and blood to meet us right where we are. Give us again the wonder uh, of, of knowing you coming close as our Emmanuel. God, you know our hearts and minds. You know the things that um, sometimes our uh, affections have fallen short of your love and taken us away from you, away from others. God, we pray for places of conflict. We pray for even places that, of, of conflict and estrangement that we might face in the coming days. God, we pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray that for conflicts around the world, God, that your peace, your love, your joy and hope would be discovered anew, that we might live anew through the one who comes to live with us and for us. God, we, we sing, let every heart prepare him room. That's hard. It's hard to come and say, crack open my heart once again. It's vulnerable. But God, we need your love. We want to be open to it. We want to receive it for ourselves. Fill us up in your love. Empower us. Encourage us. Help us encourage each other to go and share the amazing love that we know in your son, Jesus the Christ, our Emmanuel. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, if you'll stand, we'll sing our closing hymn. final days of Advent as we move towards Christmas, the good news is that love has come and is coming to us, ready or not, just like Christmas. It will come. My prayer and my hope is that you will be open to receive it, that you'll be open to share it with others in the days to come. Go in grace and go in peace.